this is Precious and welcome to episode 3 of Catching Up with Friends. For today's guest friend, she is my beautiful friend and my go-to friend here in the USA. Please welcome my friend, Chim. Hi, Chim. I invited Chim to be our third guest friend for today because I think and I believe that I have a lot of new young moms or brand new moms who would love to hear an advice from her. So, Chim is my high school friend. Let's do a time check. It's 8.13 here in California and... 10, 13 p.m. in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> the coldest place in the world. <laughs> the cold doesn't bother me anyway. anyway uh, <laughs> so let's go back to our best memories so far. The thing that I don't really forget about you and our class is that you <laughs> are the only one who's bringing books to read. Dili pocket mm. book. Chim is the only one who's really, I think, is a bookworm in our class. Because not only the funny things, we are the hallway girls. Like, yeah. <laughs> Protect our hallway because we have to maintain the cleanliness. I think, you know, have you watched the movie A Walk to Remember? Yes, I did. Okay. I saw you as this girl who is very tight on her face like yeah. <laughs> you can't be moved like everyone like we would wear like pants and you would wear skirt All and you wouldn't budge yeah you wouldn't budge so every time like I I think of you I think of Mandy more when did you move here I moved here uh February of 2013 my family was here already because I'm the youngest of the siblings so mm -hmm. my kuya my aunt and my mom was already settled in Wisconsin. What, were, what was your first job when you came here? My first job when I came here was, was a care provider at a behavioral um, treatment. When they have Down syndrome mm -hmm. or spina bifida and they can't think right, they can't talk right. That was my first job here. And mm -hmm. I liked it so much. Here, because you are happily married to Chris, you have Ooh. two beautiful, <laughs> sassy <Baby> girls. girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Zoe and I love Everdeen. How did you meet? Met during my brother's birthday party. There was an instant connection. Like, oh. like we after that night, we were inseparable. We would always message each other, try to see each other, like, Mm -hmm. He was working, I was working, and every time I'm off, we would see each other and stuff. Nice. Yeah. How motherhood changed your life? I think motherhood changed me how to pick my battles. Mm. Because you would attest to this, that growing up, I was really fierce. Like, yes. I'm fierce. Like, I yeah, was, you will fight would, for us. Yeah. Yes, was, that's you. I was really vocal. Like, yeah, and if mm -hmm. my friends or my family or the people I will love gonna hurt, I would, like, fight. For them, for you, for whoever. Now I choose my battles. Like, oh, oh, she said something, and eh, it's not worth it. I'd rather, you know, focus mm -hmm. on my kids. Or sometimes when Zoe does something like, or she's being clumsy, or there was an accident, it's either like, oh, should I, kasab ko siya, or should I just let her experience it, give her advice, and let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I always pick my battles okay, and I feel like thanks. I have more. Yeah, I have more patience. Mm -hmm. I pick my battles now. Before all the battles are my battles. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I learned how to cook Filipino food. Like mm -hmm. all I can cook is adobo and adobo. Adobo. <laughs> <laughs> adobo. <laughs> and adobo. <laughs> adobo. Adobo. <laughs> adobo. <laughs> adobo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my adobo is not that great. <laughs> so I wish I learned how to cook Filipino food. Did you have any um, pregnancy or birth problems? Oh, I knew I was pregnant then. 
And by like six or eight weeks, I started bleeding. Mm -hmm. And we were told that to bear ourselves because we would have miscarriage because they haven't seen a heartbeat. Is that for Zoe? And yeah, it's for mm -hmm. Zoe. Chances are she won't survive. Two weeks after or three weeks, I don't remember, but she checked me, she did an ultrasound again, and there was the heartbeat. Mm. The first time I heard the heartbeat, I was crying. Of and course. I was like, oh my God, this is it. Uh. That's why Zoe's name is Zoe. Because uh. she's literally the life. Everdeen, and since I had my cesarean section with Everdeen, uh, with Zoe, I had to do another cesarean section for Everdeen. And they found out that my placenta is not working as much as like as a no like normal placenta would have. Mm -hmm. So Everdeen was really, really small. After my 20, like five months, mm -hmm. I have to come to the hospital every week to get tested three times. Oh. And so um, she was delivered ahead of time mm -hmm. than the planned date, date because of that. Mm -hmm. But she was healthy. But yeah, but during the process of everything was so hard. We were all like, oh, everything. Yay. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> wow. uh, yep. I know. We were so scared, actually. In our age, we are going 30 or some of our friends are already 30. So what advice can you give to those newly married couple who are trying to have their little family don't rush it i feel like mm -hmm. um don't rush like the baby will come um think of what you are first as a couple mm -hmm. and stability like make it stable where stable financially emotionally physically and that you have your own identities as a person mm -hmm. but uh when the baby comes because baby is a lot of work like you have to really think it through like no one's no one's ever going to be ready for a baby mm -hmm. but it would be nice if you are ready on in terms of finances mm -hmm. because it's very magastos and like your emotions like how strong your relationship is mm -hmm. because there will be times that mag away mo as a couple because the mother is tired, the father is tired, and like the baby's crying. So who would pick up the baby? You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. If your relationship is like 50-50 and like ek, 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 don't have a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If your relationship <laughs> is an ek, 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 so don't have mm -hmm. a baby. Don't have a baby. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you as a mom? What should you prepare? You like should your prepare body and everything. Motherhood is more of like a mental battle, mm -hmm. I feel like. Because mm -hmm. I suffered postpartum depression mm -hmm. with Zoe and even so, and with Everdeen. Because they said, my psychologist said that if you suffered postpartum depression the first time, it will be there the second time, the third time, the fourth time. If you're a mom right now and you're holding your baby and you're like thinking like, what am I going to do next? Like know that you are fine. You will be fine. And don't shy away from asking help. Mm. And I, I read once that to become the best mother for your children or the best parent for your children, you have to be the best version of yourself. So mm. if you're not taking good care of yourself, you're, you won't take good care of your children. Mm. So you have to like, if you're tired, ask for help if you're uh. mentally exhausted ask for help mm. and if you're struggling like don't shy away from because me my guilt was because i was a stay-at-home mom we chris mm. and i decided yeah. that i would stop working mm -hmm. i didn't want to but luckily we were able we can afford it we can afford that one will stay at home mm -hmm. so i decided to stay at home and then my guilt was, so Chris was solely giving me, like, is the breadwinner of our family. Mm -hmm. Like, I would be too shy to ask him to take care of Zoe for a little bit because I feel like it's another burden for him because he's the one bringing the money. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll just do everything. Do this on my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't even, and that led to postpartum depression where I feel like I was alone. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired all the time. I was mentally exhausted. I feel like, you're mentally like you have like postpartum depression ask 
for like a therapist you don't have to go medication or like right away just ask for someone even like maybe your mother-in-law or your mother mm-hmm. talk to them or like your husband or your best friend like talk to them they're like oh you're you just just let it out let it i didn't out. do that mm-hmm. i didn't do that because i i'm too proud of myself mm-hmm. like i can do this i'm like i'm a nurse i i know how to take care of things mm-hmm. but it's literally different like it was so hard and then i was a first time mom i don't like i didn't know like what which one is better like what to do and she's crying and you don't know what to do you know like, crying. She's crying <laughs> yeah she, she's crying and then like and I, i was tired like i would be crying too and then she would cry more because i was crying it was like chaos yes so yeah so just ask for help don't be guilty about it like ask for help just again to be the best parent for your children you have to be the best version of yourself if you could give like in short three advices to those struggling moms i think number one is if you are the mom mm-hmm. right now who's watching this that is struggling know that you are doing amazing mm. do not belittle yourself like because like they say oh stay at the home mom lang ka like because like there's this like eh, housewife ka lang eh. like you know mm-hmm. no take motherhood with pride like i am a mother of this beautiful child and I am doing my best and even if it doesn't look like I am I am. So be proud of it and know that you are fine. You are doing great. Like those sleepless nights there would be a time na you can sleep again. But mm-hmm. right now you may not be able to, but it's okay. You are doing good. Second, ask for help. Yeah. Ask for help even if love that. Even if like even if like oh take care of my baby because I'm going to shower for like 30 minutes. I'm going to take a bath for 30 minutes or I want to listen to music or I want to watch a K-drama. <laughs> yeah. Watch my child, you know. Mm-hmm. Like do something that you like for yourself and don't be guilty of asking people to take care of your child when you're doing that because um again like your happiness is important to you do things that you love. so that you get the drive do things that you love so that you have your own your little piece of heaven mm. it is see the future mm. like like look beyond your situation right now mm. like right now you you probably haven't had shower for three days your mm. hair is a mess and your baby's crying mm-hmm. know that it will get better you know what ikaw dinok na isip ani kay you're a nurse You have experienced the struggles. You, mm-hmm. you are diagnosed with those things. So you are really a good example to those and good voice to those mother, young moms who are experiencing those, but, you know, not asking for help. Yeah. So thank you. What kind of a parent are you? I am more of a free-spirited, like, parent. Chris is more strict, like, even up to, like, now. Mm-hmm. He's very strong. He would like, Mom, is this an egg? Like, what would happen if I crack it? And I'll be like... crack it and you'll find out and Chris will be like no don't crack it it will be like I'm, I'm just like a guiding parent not a do that parent though academically I can be a guiding mom <laughs> Asian <laughs> Asian <laughs> what parenting style did you have ex- did you experience before that you don't want your child your children to experience today instead of being supported I feel like I was being criticized Mm-hmm. So for me as a parent, I want Zoe and Evergreen to feel like they can always, whatever they want to do in life, that I would be there to support them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to set standards for my children. Mm-hmm. So Zoe wants to become a monster. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> monster, monster at night and DJ in the morning. Oh. So yeah. I thought she wanted I, to be like Pikachu. It changes every time. <laughs> so I'm like telling her, Crazy Zoe, if you want to do that, you have to study well. <laughs> Asian mom! Silat <laughs> gyapon pag Asian mom. What's the most demanding thing you have to do being a mom? Talk to my parents. I would be like, oh, you loved Daisy way better than I did. I knew it. And my mm-hmm. parents would just laugh at it because it was true. I, everyone knew that. But I don't want my, <laughs> I don't want my children to feel that way. Because um, you have experience. I, yeah, very demanding. It's, sometimes it's driving me crazy how to attend Zoe's needs 
and everything sees at the same time. Sometimes I'm, I'm like, okay, whatever you guys do, do it. <laughs> yeah. Like motherhood is like super noble job. How, how about the most rewarding thing about being a mom? I always thought of how nice would it be for a child to come home running towards you at school and mm-hmm. telling you about their day. Like, it's so rewarding for me when I pick up Zoe from school and that she would run towards me and everything. Mm-hmm. And she would be like, I had a great day at school today. And she would tell us all the stuff that she did. And I can see her excitement. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. I've always, I've always wondered how it felt like. And I, it feels so good. What are the things that you're still working on as a couple and as, a, as parents? With Chris, the one that we're fighting now is that he thinks that he should have the final say. And I think that I have the final say. So it's always like 60-40 or 80-20, 70-30, but it should always be 100 mm-hmm. at the end of the day. I will tell our audience what not to to do instead because mm-hmm. like learn it from me because um um i didn't ask for help mm-hmm. and that led me to depress to postpartum depression so you asked for help and i didn't really took care of myself mm-hmm. i i it was all about zoe so take care of yourself like please take care of yourself i was my postpartum depression was so bad that i had thoughts of harming myself it was so mm-hmm. bad mm-hmm. it was it, it was horrible and and it didn't just end with Zoe and I'm still struggling with depression at this moment in time. When I went to my uh, therapist, she said that my depression came from my postpartum depression because I wasn't able to fix it. So if you feel like you're dealing with postpartum depression right now, fix it. And by fixing it, I'm saying like, ask a friend, go to a therapist if mm-hmm. you can go um go to a doctor if you can watch okay drama if you if mm. you have time but like <laughs> praying praying and knowing that um god is always there for you will like help you a lot nice yeah. so i just want to let everyone know that i really have a precious friend and thank you so mm-hmm. much Tim.